All right, in this lesson, we're going to go back to U substitution, only now we're going to muddy it up a little bit by using trig identities in order to, um, to find the U and the DU. So first, let's look at some of the trig identities we're going to be using. Um, the main ones we're going to be using are your Pythagorean identities, which you should know these, or at least they should be familiar. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1, 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared. 1 plus cotan squared is cosecant squared. Uh, just make sure you keep the angles the same. Uh, some other identities that are going to be used less, less common, le more seldom, whatever, uh, are your power reducing slash half angle identities where cosine squared x is equal to 1 plus cosine of 2x over 2, sine squared of x is equal to 1 minus cosine 2x over 2. And the benefit of these is that it reduces the exponent from sine and cosine. It re reduces it from 2 to 1, even though it does muddy up the angle. It, it changes the angle from x to 2x, but it does reduce the power from cosine squared to cosine to the first and from sine squared to cosine to the first, which can be helpful in some problems. So that said, let's do a few examples of problems where you would need to use some trig identities in order to set up the integration. Uh, this is the first one we're going to do. Uh, sine cubed x, uh, if you remember all your identities are based on trig functions squared. So the first thing I'm going to do is change sine cubed into sine squared of x times sine of x. And the reason I'm doing that, well, as I've already said, is because all identities that we saw here are based on sine and cosine and tangent and cotangent. All of these trig functions are squared, so I like to have my trig functions written squared rather than cubed. Uh, and in this case, we do have one left over. Now, this one left over is very important uh, because whenever you're doing integration that is not power rule or recognition, you're always looking for a u and a du for substitution. And I'm looking at sine x dx and this is the derivative of cosine. Um, now, that's, it's approximately the derivative. I know it should be negative sine x would be the derivative of cosine, but it's pretty close. So I'm noticing that that's the derivative of cosine, which means I would love to fix this problem so I could let u equal cosine x, because if u is cosine x, then du would be negative sine x dx and I have my du right here. So this sine x dx I'm going to set aside and it's going to be my du. The problem is I need to turn the rest of my problem into cosine so that I could let u be cosine x. Well that's not too hard with sine squared because we know that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1 uh, which means 1 minus cosine squared x is equal to sine squared. I'm going to leave the sine x dx out here and now that I've brought cosine into the problem, I can let u equal cosine x. I'm not going to let it be cosine squared. I just want u to be cosine. And then du, the derivative of cosine, is negative sine. And I've got my sine x dx. All I'm missing is the negative. So negative sine x dx is my du. I put a negative in the problem. I'll offset it with a negative on the outside. And now we can do u substitution. So it's going to be negative, antiderivative. Instead of 1 minus cosine squared, cosine is my u, so that's going to be 1 minus u squared. And the negative sine x dx, all of that is du. So all of this comes out as the du. And that's why I left that sine sitting out there, because I recognize that as the derivative of cosine. Once I did the substitution, now it's a simple power rule. That's the idea behind u substitution is to take an ugly antiderivative and turn it into something a little sexier, which 1 minus u squared is pretty sexy. So that would be minus on the outside stays there. The antiderivative of this, that's a power rule. Antiderivative of 1 is u. The antiderivative of u squared will be u cubed over 3. Don't forget the plus c. And then we will substitute my cosine x back in for the u. So my final answer is going to be negative cosine x minus cosine cubed x divided by 3 plus the c. Make sure that minus is easy to see. There we go. Uh, and there's your answer. 
So it's U substitution with that little trig identity twist. There's example number one. All right, number two. Uh, same type problem, except here we have uh, sine cubed and cosine squared. Just like the last problem, I don't like having sine, cosine, or tangent, any of those two weird exponents, uh, like three. Not that that's real weird, but I would prefer to have everything to powers of two. So I have sine squared, but there's still one sine left over. Cosine squared x, I'm not going to change. That's already squared. dx. And once I do that, I'm now looking at my problem, and I'm wanting to find something that could serve as a du. And I'm looking at sine x. I'm looking at sine x. That's by itself. This can be my du if I can let u equal to cosine x. So I'm letting what's in the problem determine my u. So I find my du first. So sine x dx will be my du. If I can let u equal cosine x, the problem is I have a sine squared right here. I need everything else to be cosines so that I can use cosine x for my u. And that's pretty easy with sine squared, just like the last problem. Sine squared will turn into 1 minus cosine squared. Everything else is going to stay the same. Sine x and cosine squared x. Um, the antiderivative, I lost my integral sign, there it is. Uh, now I have a bunch of cosines, I still have that one sign there, which is fine, because I'm going to let u now be cosine x, because the derivative of cosine is negative sine x dx, and all I have to do to get my du is put a negative with this sign. Now I have my negative sine x dx, I'll offset it with a negative out here, and it works very similar to that last problem. I have a negative on the outside. Now cosine x is going to become u. So instead of 1 minus cosine squared, 1 minus u squared. The negative sine x dx, all that comes out as my du. And then I have another cosine squared, which will become a u squared. And so now I have 1 minus u squared times u squared. Uh, this could be done with parts, but don't make it too difficult. Let's distribute that u squared. Make it u squared minus u to the fourth du, and now we have a power rule. So it's negative u cubed over 3 minus u to the fifth over 5 plus a c, and then we'll substitute our cosine back in. So negative cosine cubed x over 3 minus cosine to the fifth x over 5 plus some unknown constant. So there we go. You identify the du before you pick your u, and then you try to steer the rest of the problem into whatever your choice of u is. In this case, that was cosine. All right, let's try this one. Okay, now I'm bringing in tangents and secants. I see tangent cubed. So just like the other problems, I'm going to break tangent up so that I can have, so I can have tangent squared. So I have tangent squared x. Uh, and then I have tangent and secant left over. And while you're doing these problems, you're always on the lookout for a derivative that you recognize. And it is my hope that at this point you see tangent x secant x dx, and you recognize that because this can be my du if I can let u equal secant x. The derivative of secant is secant x tangent x, and that's what I have right here. So I need to turn everything else into secants, which isn't too hard because there is an identity that ties tangent squared to secant. Uh, tangent squared plus 1 is secant squared, so I'm going to take out the tangent squared and make that secant squared x minus 1. Uh, and then I'm going to leave all of this alone because tangent x secant x, that is the derivative of secant. I don't want to touch it. I recognize that as a derivative. And now I can do my u sub. u is equal to secant x. And du is secant x tangent x. You find the du before you pick your u. I know that seems backwards, but you're looking for a derivative before you pick the u. So secant x tangent x dx, tangent x secant x dx, that's all the same. So every bit of that is my du. I meant for that to be green. So there's my du. 
and secant squared x, well, u is secant, so secant squared becomes u squared. The minus 1 isn't going anywhere, and the tangent x secant x dx, all of that comes out as du, and the antiderivative of u squared minus 1, that's a power rule, u cubed over 3 minus u plus a c. Now I've integrated, we plug secant x back in. So our answer was u cubed over 3 becomes secant cubed over 3 minus u, which was secant x plus a c. When you're doing these problems, you want to identify the du before you pick your u. Now, that's backwards, like I said, but always be on the lookout for a derivative that you recognize, uh, which means you need to know your trig derivatives. You stinkheads, you never learn your trig derivatives. All right, moving on. Tangent squared secant to the fourth dx. Well, that's a lot of stuff. Ooh, this is a definite integral, too. We're going from 0 to power of 2. Interesting. All right, so, uh, or 0 to power of 4. So we're going from 0 to power of 4, just like the rest of the problems. If I have an exponent higher than 2, I'm going to break it up. So tangent squared, uh, secant squared, I'm going to turn into secant squared and secant squared. And while I'm doing this problem, I'm always on the lookout for something that I recognize as a derivative. And I see secant squared. Now, actually, there's two of them, but I only need one. And I like secant squared because I recognize that secant squared is the derivative of tangent. So secant squared dx will be my du if I can let u equal tangent x. Now, there's the question. Can I get everything else in terms of tangent? Sure. I'm going to use that same property we just used earlier. Uh, tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared. So I'm going to take out secant squared, and I'm going to plug in tangent squared of x plus 1. Everything else is going to stay the same. The antiderivative from 0 to power of 4 of tangent squared x. Uh, and then secant squared x dx is going to stay there. You don't want to change that one. Don't use an identity for secant squared because that's going to be my du. You want the du to be visible, so I'm going to leave that there. My u is going to be tangent x. My du is going to be the derivative of tangent, which is secant squared x. And I've got du right here. I just need to plug u in for the rest of the tangents. So this will turn into the antiderivative of u squared times tangent squared plus 1, but tangent squared, or tangent is u, so that's u squared plus 1. Secant squared x dx comes out as the du. And now I'm going to convert my limits of integration because I think this is easier for a definite integral. 0 and power over 4 are values of x. So if x is equal to 0, that means u is equal to the tangent of 0, u equals tangent x, and the tangent of 0 is 0. So u will remain 0. If x equals power over 4, that means u is going to be the tangent of power over 4, and the tangent of power over 4 is 1. So I'm going to turn my limits of integration to 0 and 1, and now I don't have to plug my tangent x back in anymore. Uh, before I integrate this, we will distribute the u squared. u squared times u squared is u to the fourth plus u squared du, and now it's a nice sexy power rule. u to the fifth over 5 plus u to the cubed over 3. Uh, and this is a definite integral. We don't need plus c, but I will evaluate this from 0 to 1. Since I changed my limits of integration, I don't need to plug my tangent x back in. Hey, the bell's ringing. So let's plug in 1. That's 1 to the fifth over 5 plus plug in 1, 1 to the cubed over 3. Minus, plug in 0, 0 to the 5th over 5 plus 0 cubed over 3, and there is your answer. That would not be hard to combine, but the bell just rang, and I've got to end this. So there you go, using trig identities to steer towards a u and a du uh, to integrate problems. Yay, happy day.